So IIH is um, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. By saying it's idiopathic, it means that, um, you know, we don't know why it happens, but we do know that it's associated with weight gain. Um, not with, um, you know, obesity per se, but in patients who put on weight uh, in a short space of time. And um, that uh, could be also related to other metabolic conditions which are associated with weight gain, like, you know, things like diabetes and the um, PCOS, which is a condition affecting the ovaries. All these conditions are a little bit interlinked. So we know that um, patients who put on Small, who put on weight in a small period of time, they go on to develop increased pressure. And this is the important thing. It's the pressure that's increased in the brain. It's not that there is too much CSF. So it's the pressure which is increased. And it's that increased pressure in the brain that causes the symptoms of IIH, which include, you know, it affects your vision. It can give you headaches which can mimic migraine headaches, or some patients have migraine type headaches along with their IIH. So the signs of IIH can vary from the headaches. And these headaches, as well as being similar to the migraine headaches that we discussed previously, can be slightly different in the way that they can, uh, these patients can get early morning headaches. And by that, we mean patients who wake up with a headache before they even get out of bed. So first thing, they open their eyes and the headache is worse. And when they get out of bed and they start walking around, the headache starts getting better. They can also, patients can also have a visual obscurations. And by that, we mean that they transiently, momentarily lose their vision. And that particularly happens when they, for example, change posture from sitting to standing or when they bend down they momentarily lose vision, where vision goes completely black for a few seconds. The other thing that's associated with it is the um, what we call pulsatile tinnitus, which is a whooshing in your ear, where it goes whoosh, as if you're hearing your heartbeat in your ear. And most importantly uh, is visual symptoms. So apart from the visual obscurations, you can lose part of the vision. So when you're looking straight at something, you're not seeing the whole picture. There's bits missing, particularly on the sides of the picture is missing, or your eye, um, your, you, you know, your eyesight is getting worse. So it's very important for those patients to quickly get seen by an eye doctor or optician to make sure that uh, their eyes is assessed because this condition causes swelling in the back of the eyes and that eventually can lead to the loss, complete loss of vision. And that's why it's an emergency and it needs to be treated and managed very quickly. So the um, treatment, the best treatment and the main treatment for IIH is weight loss. That is, if you want to call it curative treatment, that's the cure for, for IIH is losing weight. And we recommend that patients lose about minimum 10 to 15% of body weight for the IIH to completely resolve and get better. But obviously the weight loss can take time. And during that time, as I explained, this condition can make you go blind. So what we then provide during that time while the patient is losing vision is medication to try to protect the vision. And those medication include things like acetazolamide and topiramate. These are medication that we can give. If the medication is not enough, we don't want the patient to go blind, then we go into more invasive procedures. And those would include things like sinus venous stenting, if there is a um, closing of the blood vessels in the brain, in the veins in the brain, that can increase the pressure. And by uh, opening these blood vessels up, we can reduce the pressure. So if the medication is not working, we go on to more invasive procedures such as this. And eventually some patients even require surgery where they have a shunt inserted. And a shunt is a tubing that's put in the brain and it drains into the tummy or into the chest where it drains the fluid to reduce the pressure in the brain. But we obviously start with the things which, such as medication and most importantly, weight loss. So 
surgery is only recommended if despite all the treatment, all the medical treatment, um, the patient is still getting worsening of vision or this, the vision is still getting worse. The swelling in the back of the eye is still getting worse um, or, you know, they're losing the fields. So the fields are becoming constricted. So if there is, it's mainly based on vision, <clears throat> sorry. And that's why it's important that the patients have very regular visual assessments because all the treatment is based on how the vision is doing. If the vision is okay, we continue with medication. If the vision is getting worse despite continuing with the medication, then we need to go to the next level of treatment and eventually it will be the shunt. So yes, um, IIH can improve and it can uh, resolve, or as we say, can be cured um, with weight loss. So in patients who lose weight, we see that the pressure comes down, the vision stabilizes, the swelling goes away, and things start improving. And that's when we can say that the IIH is in remission, or if you want to call it, uh, the IIH has resolved. But patients can continue to have the headaches, and those headaches are migraine type headaches. And unfortunately that can become a chronic issue despite the fact that the IIH has stabilized, the headaches, the migraine type headaches can continue. And they will need treatment separately as per migraine type headaches, which we've outlined previously. So it is important that um, um, patients are aware that just because the, you know, the vision has settled and the swelling has gone and they've lost the weight, it doesn't mean that the headaches will go away as well. That's a separate issue. And uh, the other important thing is to be aware that uh, patients um, can have relapse of the IIH. So the IIH can come back, particularly if they put on weight or if there is any other triggers, sometimes that we can see that the swelling will come back, the symptoms will come back. So we always advise that patients with IIH do remain on their ophthalmology follow-up for some time to make sure that the vision remains stable, the swelling doesn't come back before they are discharged. 